The field of immunotherapy began in 1911, when Leonard Noon and John Freeman published the first paper in The Lancet. A year later, Dr. William Franklin was born. These three men shaped one of the greatest medical stories of the 20th century. Bill Franklin has spent over 70 years at the forefront of allergy. He's worked directly with its pioneers. He's been instrumental in developing medical approaches to treating allergy. And he has raised public awareness of allergy with the groundbreaking pollen count. All the while treating unprecedented numbers of patients at St Mary's Hospital. Medicine always interested me. As a senior registrar, set one question you, and you answer it. So the question was set and um, I must have answered better than the other chap and that's how I got the job. I've had a lot of luck in my life. During the Second World War, Bill joined the Royal Army Medical Corps. When Singapore fell to the Japanese, Bill was taken as a prisoner of war. This didn't stop him practising medicine though and he saved the lives of several men in the camp. In the hay fever clinic they were short of a doctor for two mornings and one afternoon. I was free on those two mornings and that afternoon. So I applied, started working, and after about six weeks, uh, I said, I, I like this very much. Can I work full time? And Freeman said, yes, of course you can. I would love to have you. And that's how I, I really started working in, in allergy at St. Mary's. Freeman and Noon were great friends. They were school friends together. They both were in the shooting team and so on. And was, Freeman was a bacteriologist, basically, you see. Uh, like other allergists, they, they weren't allergists, they were, they were hygienists or they gave some other term if you look in Hamburg and Berlin and Paris and so on. The clever thing about Noon, he said that if you are allergic to pollen, when, and he's, he used pollen as his model, if you're allergic to it, the amount of allergen in one pollen grain is enough to cause symptoms. They got this pollinarium going. Each individual pollen uh, stem had, had to be cut with scissors. We employed the local village people. And, and in the end, when I, I took it over, uh, it was the largest pollen farm in the world. We produced more pollen there than anywhere, uh, than any other pollen farm. When Bill started getting patients who reacted to penicillin, this raised the issue of penicillin allergy for the first time. So he had uh, a number of interesting and quite pointed discussions, I think, with uh, Fleming about this, who initially was in denial that uh, this just wasn't a possibility, that penicillin could uh, produce allergic reactions. A man called Restrict was looking at the toxic effect of things, of mole spores. Freeman went to Restrict and said, I want you to provide me with, with uh, seasonal mole spores and non-seasonal ones. And he provided him with alternaria, cladosporum as the two seasonal ones, and a penicillium mould. And that was the one that contaminated the plate that August that set off the, the, the penicillin soil. So directly, or if, if you like, indirectly, the cause of the beginning of the antibiotic era was due to the allergy department working immediately below Fleming's laboratory. And, but I got on very well with Fleming. The plates of penicillium notatum that Freeman was culturing to make extracts for skin testing was potentially what contaminated Fleming's plates. It, it actually was, yes. Mm. Definitely. Yes. Despite the professional rivalry around him, Bill nurtured the allergy clinic and it went from strength to strength. This girl's pollen sensitivity has been confirmed by skin tests. Most of the patients, if they were over the age of 15, were encouraged to give themselves their own injections. On the basis of these findings, the correct vaccine and dosage is decided. As a large number of doses are needed, she is taught to give herself these injections at home. Each patient who was competent, and you had to teach them and then take them and see them give themselves their first injection. Some of them did have reactions, but at least we never had a death the whole time, uh, although we were treating these vast number of people. Of course, the last 10 years, when Freeman was officially still in charge, we never even saw him at all. Uh, and I was really uh, in, in sole charge and did exactly what I liked and so on. I said, we must have a botanist. I want to do pollen counts and things. We gave it to the news media from 1961. And now you see pollen count in the, uh, in the news and things. You just think, well, this, this has always been going on and so on. No, I proudly say, no, we started it. 
because I thought it was, you know, I wanted to get people interested. But a lot of people in, in those days, people didn't realize until you gave to the lay public the pollen count, the, the cause of their seasonal symptoms. So even in those days, 1954, I was trying to purify the, uh, the pollen because I said lots of the stuff that we're injecting into people has nothing to do with, with allergens and so on. But Bill's ambitions weren't limited to growing and developing the allergy service at St Mary's. His work was being recognised further afield too. And the time came to bring together all the physicians working in the field. So Bill became a founding member of what is now the BSACI. Bill's contribution must rank alongside those of others, such as the penicillin discovery at, at uh, St Mary's, to have substantially changed the lives of, of, of many individuals. I will say, I'm going right back to my childhood, it's the patients that you're dealing with, the people and their personal and their problems that I find allergy is so interesting. Mm -hmm.